Assalamu alaikum, good evening and welcome once again to Community Champions with me, Zakir Khan. Uh, tonight we're talking to another fantastic, uh, well-deserved organization in our community based in Tower Hamlets in Poplar. Um, they are the Poplar Youth and Community Development Association. Uh, I'm sure I see uh, Sinba, the individuals involved, they work with young people, they work with the elderly, they work with the whole community. Uh, so without further ado, let me introduce you to my guest. On my far right, I have Rihal Chowdhury. Assalamu alaikum. Rihal, how are you? Fine, thank you. Thank you very much. Rihal is the here. treasurer of the organization. Alhamdulillah. Welcome to the show, Rihal. Jazakallah. Thank you. Uh, next to Rihal, I have a very familiar face. I'm not sure why he's under Sini. I think we all know who he is. Um, he is the ex councillor of Tower Hamlets, uh, Dulal Uddin. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, Nice to see you, Baisal. <laughs> and you, Dulal. Now, Dulal is also the chair, chairman of the organization. Um, on my immediate left, we have uh, another familiar face uh, in the world of martial arts. Uh, he's none other than Fred Turner, who is uh, the head coach of the Docklands Dragons and now the Poplar Dragons as well. Fred, how are you doing? How are you doing, mate? Thanks for coming on the show, Fred. That's all right, no problem. <laughs> and last but not least, a very uh, smart, well dressed, uh, very, uh, what shall I say, talented young man at the end, who's Ibrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. Ibrahim, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, as you can see, Ibrahim's dressed in uh, his martial arts costume, judo costume, should I say, yeah? So I'm going to come to you in a second, Ibrahim. Okay, uh, viewers, um, we have a clip, as usual, uh, to show you of the organization. And once we've seen the clip, we'll come back and speak to our guest. So if we can watch the video clip first, then we'll come back and speak to our guest. Poplar Youth Community Development Association পূর্ব লন্ডনের পপলারের একটি নবীন স্বেচ্ছাসেবী সংগঠন 2013 সালে প্রতিষ্ঠিত এই প্রতিষ্ঠানটির মূল লক্ষ্য ধর্ম বর্ণ জাতি নির্বিশেষে কমিউনিটির সকল তরুণদের গঠনমূলক কাজে উৎসাহিত করার মাধ্যমে শক্তিশালী প্রজন্ম তৈরিতে অবদান রাখা সংগঠনের কার্যক্রমগুলোর মাঝে রয়েছে টাওয়ার হ্যামলেটস এডুকেশন ফাউন্ডেশন অ্যাপ্রেন্টিস প্রোগ্রাম আন্ডার 14 ফুটবল কোচিং পপলার ড্রাগনস জুডো হেলথ অ্যাওয়ারনেস ইন রমাদান ফুটবল টুর্নামেন্ট ফেস্টিভ্যালস এন্ড ফান ডে ড্রাগস এন্ড অ্যালকোহল অ্যাওয়ারনেস প্রোগ্রাম এমপ্লয়মেন্ট থ্রু ডেভেলপমেন্ট ট্রেনিং হেলথ Bonus event, seminar on parenting, community charity barbecue, community iftar gathering, youth seminar on skill development, or skill development workshops. Doshuk, our Rajskir Community Champion, Popular Youth Community Development Association. Ashun Jani Tadar Shambhur ke Arabi Stari to. Okay, now that was the uh, the Popular Youth and Community Association. Now, um, Dulal, let's start with you as the chairman of the organization. Uh, when did you start? When did the, the actual organization, you know, come into fruitation? First of all, I just want to say thank you to yourself Lisa, for inviting us, giving us the platform. Pleasure. Nice to see you. Thank you, um, Chanelai. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Ruo. Um, and Ibrahim. <laughs> thank you, my son. <laughs> thank you, my brother. Um, <coughs> 2003, 2010, um, I lost the election. After that, by sub, obviously, um, before the election, when I was a councillor, before I be like came elected, I was doing stuff mm -hmm. in the community. When I was a councillor, I was doing stuff. After I dropped from the council, I dropped my seat. I was kind of thinking of doing something or creating something in the community. Mm -hmm. So come 2000, I say, um, <coughs> 13, mid-summer, um, myself and many other young people from the community, I was discussing and debating and talking with many young people about creating something in the community with their help and support. Mm -hmm. So that was the start. Um, first program we did by Saab, it was, um, it was like an um, um, Islamic program in the community. The um, reason we done that, it was uh, to do with Gaza and Syria, a lot of, a lot of sad uh, scene we see. So 
we, me, myself, we all, and many other young people, we came together, we've, set, we've, we've created a plan to how to set up this program. This program went fantastically well. A lot of people turned up. We raised nearly almost 8,000 or 9,000 pounds, exact figure, I don't wow, know, something like that we raised. We had over 200 people on the event, and a lot of people said that was an event, that was a real program. So afterward, we felt empowered. We feel we, we done well. We had to sit again, and we had to rethink again about future of this organization. So <coughs> we came together. Many of us, again, we sat, and we were talking about what we do next. But you, you have always been involved in uh, community organizations. Ever since Most I was of a your kid. life. Yes, ever since but I was a kid. This is not new to you, no, is no, 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 no. But I was, I was, after the election, I felt like something I need to do to right. get myself involved and get myself engaged and busy in the community. So this was the main reason why I wanted to empower young people, bringing them together and create something for them. And I'm on the side just helping them by but mainly it's young people who's leading and organizing and collectively supporting the organization okay. and helping the organization. And through that, we see a lot of benefit in the community. A lot of benefit in the community we see by some positive benefit in the okay, community. I'll, I'll come to you, I'll come back to you. Fred, let me, let me come to you now. Yeah. <coughs> now you've been like a, a pillar of the community for many, many years. Yeah. You know, with your involvement, uh, s s particularly through judo, martial arts. Now, mm. what, what motivates you as an individual, you know, to continue? Because you've been doing it for so long, Fred. Now, well, why, why do this? Why, why is it Basically, important? when I give up being an international and whatnot, I, I found a hole. And somebody said to me, well, why don't you go teaching? He said, like, you've done a good job down that particular club. So they set me a club up in Borough originally, since we've had to move. And when you see what kids can do, and you put a smile on them, mm -hmm. it's all worthwhile. That's basically it. The smile. I'm, yeah, the smile, the sense of achievement, what they've, what they've achieved. Mm -hmm. Um, Cause and you, 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 you're, you're, you're a seven, seven Dan, aren't you? Yeah. So that's, that's quite high. Pretty high up. Yeah, it? pretty high <laughs> up. <laughs> now, have you taught anyone in your class who've actually reached any of these Dan's? Uh, yeah. They have? Uh, one of them can't be here tonight because he's actually teaching my club now, <laughs> <laughs> which is Scott. Uh, one of your community winners, um, sports Scott, award. Yes, I remember Scott. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, that was Ricky that won that. Was it Ricky? Yeah, that's my eldest son. Ricky, t yeah. But okay. Tony Strong, he won two thousand pound in, uh, and he went on. He's now uh, teaching at one of the community centres. Wow. As a uh, sports development. So it, it does, you know. Yeah. So it. it does well. Absolutely. And, and uh, I, I think it's important that we have not just organisations but individuals like yourself who yeah. give up their time and effort, you know, and motivate local people to come together and take part in these kind of, you know, activities. Yeah. So, one second, Fred, let me just go to Ruhel now. Yeah. Ruhel, um, before we talk about the organisation itself, I just want to talk about Fred here. Okay. Now, sure. I've known Fred for many, many years, you know, and it's people like him. him who give up their time? Of course, uh, you know, the, you know, their free time. He could be at home, watching telly, having a cup of tea, but he doesn't. He's actually engaged in the community, week in, week out. Now, what would you say, you know, to people like Fred, you know, as a community activist, you know, how can we uh, acknowledge them? How can we thank them for the, what they're doing for us? Well, it is, um, for myself, I see, you know, as, as a role model, like, you know, something that other people need to see and see that, that they can do this as well. You know, something like how Fred gives his time, you know, his, you know, his time, his money, his wealth, his health, he's giving it yeah. for, for the sake of the community yeah. and without any charge, without anything. Again, you know, we have to, you know, inspire to this that, you know, we have to, you know, as well in individuals have to lift ourselves up and start thinking about the community, start thinking, you know, uh, what we can do. But it's not everyone's cup of tea. You know, yeah. everyone's saying, why are you, no, what, I use not as well. Why are you going around and doing this, doing that, doing that? You know, what, what, <laughs> what's the problem? Just look after your family, that's enough. But what we sometimes misunderstand is, 
our family, our children are in the community. Absolutely. And if our community are on a bad slope, then it's going to affect our children and our household and everything. But if we can do better in our community, in the nearby communities, it gives a, like a dominoes effect course, where yeah. the goodness, you know, we can all help out in the goodness. And again, it occupies many, many people, many, many age groups, many, many things. And, you know, it's about then you're dealing with individual lives and you're changing individual people's lives. And when you see that, it kind of motivates you. And so these people, you know, they need to be, you know, awarded. I think they, you know, Fred needs to be, get some kind of award, you know, to be, and... We had, actually. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you know, talking about um, positive um, images and, you know, role models, now it's, you know, it's important that the next generation look up to individuals who they can one day say, well, I want to emulate, I want to be this person. You know, and I think we've got a young person here who, you know, is very, uh, I would say, a very talented young man. Um, Ibrahim, you are, is this how you normally dress when you go outside? Uh, no. <laughs> what is this uh, you're this, wearing? This is my judo gi. So I wear this to when I go judo down the club, uh -huh. when I do a little bit of fighting. How, how often do you wear this? About twice a week. Twice a week. How old are you? Uh, I'm 11. You're 11, okay. And do you, uh, how long have you been doing judo? Uh, about three months. I three think. months, okay. And have you, what do you think? Have you learned something? Yes. Yeah? What have you learned? Have you learned to protect yourself or? Um, I've learned so much different kinds of moves uh -huh. in judo. Wow. Like, that would like teach me so much things to defend myself against other people. Okay, and is, is, is Fred your coach? <coughs> uh, yes. He's the head coach, isn't he? Yeah. The senior coach. Right, okay. Now, tell me, Ibrahim, do you encourage other young people like yourself to come on join in and be part of this well yes i encourage like my friends to come down to the club and um like do some martial arts mm -hmm. and actually learn something like valuable in life and wow. okay. um like actually to learn something yeah very good now fred you know very confident young man yeah not many young 11 year olds could come live on telly that's right. Speak so, you know, confidently. Um, but the other thing is, Fred, you know, sports in general, yeah. especially martial arts, instills discipline, doesn't it? What I try to instill, yes, the discipline. But it's more about trying. Mm -hmm. I will not anybody say in our club they can't do something. Okay. You will try. You might not be very good at it but you'll get better at it. So it's the never say never attitude? Yeah, it, it's to try, discipline yes, to make friends. We don't only teach Asian boys, we've got Eastern European, we've got English, we've got Chinese, we've got mixed race. Mm -hmm. Where they get together, um, for so long in this borough, they seem to be their own separate groups. Yeah. And what we're trying to do is bring the groups together. Of course. So that they learn about each other's cultures. How important is that, Fred? I think it's very important because, like I said, they keep separate and there's always a friction between them. Mm. But it's basically you're letting, my, letting you into our house and you're seeing how everybody lives. Yeah. I mean, I've had to learn stuff at this particular club it's predominantly Bengali. Mm. Now you have girls that wear the scarves yeah. and whatnot. You know, they've helped me by telling me what I can and can't do. <coughs> and it's a learning process, isn't it's it? It's a learning process. Absolutely, yeah. So I'm learning about another culture. Absolutely. And uh, the more you learn about another culture, the more understanding you have. Yeah. And the more respect you can. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Now, Dulal, we've just spoken to Ibrahim. Um, goes twice a week, martial judo. Now, you know, um, as, a, as a parent, uh, let, let's put your chairman hat to the side at the moment. As a parent, yeah, now, how is it important and why is it important to you 
that your son needs to be in an environment with other community um, people, not just Bangladeshis. Thanks for your question, mm. Basab. Basab, look, um, let me share something with yourself. When I was a kid, I brought up in Tar Hamlet. When I was a kid, I used to look around to do something, but I never had anyone to grab me and say, get involved or do this and that. <laughs> so to me, to, to me, whether it's my kids or other people's kids, when I was a kid, to me, I, I was to think one day I'll grow if I have my own kids, if Allah with his help. I will do what I wanted to do mm -hmm. when I was a kid. So this is what I'm doing now myself with my kids and same time with other kids. I'm trying to give them something in life. Through the prosperity come, harmony come, love come, peace come, unity come. So I feel every single one of us parents, we have a duty and our duty is to make sure we, we, give, we give time to our children, we give what the children wants and through that, one day, we'll be proud of our kids. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, Dilal. Uh, viewers, we have to take a short break, uh, a very, very short break. So please stay with us, and we'll continue our discussion with Popular Youth and Community Association after the break. See you soon. and welcome back to Community Champions. Tonight we're speaking to Poplar Youth and Community Development Association. I have with me, <coughs> excuse me, I have with me um, on my right, Dulaluddin, the chairman. Um, on my far right, I have Rahul Chowdhury, the treasurer. On my left, I have Fred Turner, the head coach of the Poplar Dragons and Dobson's Dragons. And uh, we have a new guest. We have uh, Tasmir Chowdhury, who is a volunteer for Poplar Dragons and also a volunteer of Poplar Youth and Community Association. Tasmia, welcome to the show. Thank you. How thank are you? Thank you for having us. I'm welcome. Fine, thank you. You okay? Yeah. Good, okay. Um, I'm going to come to you in a second. Yep. I'm just going to speak to Real now. Real, tell us um, about the different projects the association has initiated in the last year or so. We've actually, um, again, helps to yourself, you know, from Canary Wharf Group, we've been able to run quite a lot of events. As, um, I've, I got involved with Dullah by, as, you know, for, as he was saying about the first event in Syria and there were some youngsters who wanted to do things in the community yeah. and we saw, saw Dullah as a channel so um, one of the events that we did was, say the first one was about the orphans and the S S Syria event then there was um, a murder in our area, yeah, there was you know, yeah. two murders actually yeah. um, and what we did is we thought we need to do a talk for the, um, like a seminar for the youth, the responsibility of the youth so we've done a big seminar on that um, then we done a, another one followed up with the responsibilities of the parents. Yeah. So what the parents need to do, you know, as in like ho f sitting down with the children. And again, we had different um, speakers, you know, different faith groups. And I think one of them, you was, um, you was there as well. And yeah. other ones are drug, alcohol awareness. We've done, um, again, getting all age group, all different people in, involved. We had a NHS um, health awareness event. Again, there was the elderly community, the young community, wow. pe people who can't normally, who wouldn't go to the doctors. You know, someone who we, we had little stalls and doctors came from um, All Saints practice, the, the local practice. They done checkups. They done because our Asian community suffer from diabetes. Mm. They done a, 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 a main a lot of um, events r r r regarding okay. the diabetes. Then we've had uh, many other events, you know, if the community, if the gathering, we've done a community if the gathering. Where again, that was quite big, wasn't it? Yeah, we <laughs> uh, there was uh, quite. Um, we did send the pictures, and I'm not yeah. sure it's not been uploaded. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, there was a few hundred people there again wow. from all communities. We have uh, the sister, you know, other people to see what we do, you know, why we do iftar. And we had Ikra International as well. They um, came to do a show the hospital that they're doing in Bangladesh mm. as well. And, you know, it was kind of like, you know, it was kind of mixed and we try to get yeah. awareness of everything. Again, adaptations in the Asian community, something that we kind of hold back in, making awareness with orphans in need. So we've had that. And the upcoming one, we've obviously got the Dragon Judo. That's every Sunday that's happening. And then we've got the <coughs> football under 14. That is going to start off every Wednesdays. We've got again in the workhouse. Mm -hmm. And we've got homework club happening in the Robin Hood. And that's again with Swan Housing. Um, right. They're helping us um, is to do the after school because parents find it. A lot of parents come to us and they say, we don't understand these homework. The kitab, the buzi, the buzi, you know, I need some kind of support. Yeah, yeah, of but they're getting 11, 12, 13, 14. Even I find sometimes these homework oh, cards. Yeah. So these something that we can make, you know, something for the disadvantaged kids and advantaged kids, whoever, everyone, you know, collectively to support them. Because through education, they, you know, you know, it's one of the means of, you know, breaking barriers and, you know, getting up the ladder. Yeah. Thank you very much, Rob. No now let me go straight to uh, Tasmia now. <coughs> Tasmia, um, obviously uh, the, or the organization is doing so much work, so many different projects. Yeah. Some of them you are involved in directly. Now, why did you decide to volunteer in an organization like the Popular Youth and Community? Because I personally think that this association has really helped many people in many different ways because obviously now as youths, our brains are still developing and so what we see in our society if we see people doing drugs alcohol that's what we're going to think is normal and we're going to be growing up to that now the association helps us understand that some of these things are wrongs and not to go down the wrong paths as we get older so as a volunteer what, what do you do what, what's your role as a volunteer like so for instance i help people when they need the help i like show them around the places and yeah, really help and them. Do you invite uh, young people to come and take part in like, yeah. The judo? Yeah, <coughs> I help and tell people, like, give them the courage that look, it's fun. You're gonna have fun. It's gonna, and in a fun, practical way, you're gonna learn many stuff, which will again help you in the future. Do you do judo yourself? No, I don't. You really don't. Do it That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> That's not very good, is it, Fred? <laughs> She's in encouraging everyone to come and uh, do judo. You, you should sign up yourself. I do more of the admin work. <laughs> okay. Um, now, my next question to you would be, you know, why do you think it's important, right, that uh, organisations like Poplar Youth and Community are, you know, in existence? Why is it important to have these kind of organisations? I think it's really important that we have these organisations, as I mentioned before, that, again, to help us know what type of path we should go down when we're older because when we're older if we go down the wrong path that's it our life is now not really in a good position so mm -hmm. again they help us understand so apart from doing the projects what else does this organization help you to do you know do you go to visit places do you go and you know see other places um, yeah we, we go to many other places for instance the canary wolf i would like to say thank you to you for giving us the opportunity to go and see what's going on in How was the visit? Did you enjoy it? I really enjoyed it. There was 20 of us and we all enjoyed it. Like, we all had really good fun. And what was, what did you like particularly of that visit? What was the most I like the fact that there was the, those rooms that where no one else would be allowed apart from the people that worked there and the fact that we were given the opportunity to go in there and see what's going on. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Now, Zulal, now again, another very young, confident uh, person from the community. Now, <laughs> Tasmir was talking about the importance of being involved, and uh, one, of the, one of the reasons is the organization helps and guides young people to the right path. Now, again, as a community activist, ex counselor as a parent, how do you see our next generation, the young people like Tasmir, who have growing up in Poplar, and something that Real touched on earlier, you've had two murders in the last two years in Poplar, in, in the high street, yeah. yeah? Now, how does that make you feel as a, someone who is striving to do something for the community, but then you see on your doorstep, you have, you know, these kind of fatalities. How, how does that make you feel as a community person? Um, why is this happening? That's the question. I said, um, my frank 
honest um, answer to yourself, after the um, tragic, in sadly tragic incident took place, we were very sad this to happen in front of our doorstop. Mm. Um, this, the most saddest thing was I knew the, I knew the victim. You, you I knew him. Him. Yeah, I knew him personally, yeah. and he used to live next to, next block to my block. So you saw him and grow up. Yeah, grow up every day, Hylium, Hylium, and suddenly he's gone. Obviously, it was a bit of shock for us, but then we see a lot of tension in the community, um, grouping. To t so uh, that does give us um, the wrong message, in a way, thinking, you know what, is there going to be another one? So before there's going to be another one, we as a community, we need to come together, and we need to talk about it, and we need to think about a solution to it. So obviously, we as a small pe pe people, by some, not power, we think locally, if we can make a small difference, why not? So we speak to each other, and we say, if we create a program, if we bring young people together, and if we share each other's business, if we mm. speak to each other, if we get to find out each other's business, maybe through that we can help someone. Maybe through that we can build someone. Maybe through that we can give someone something. And through that, maybe he's happy, I'm happy, and eventually, community will be a happy place to live. So my honest comment to you, Baisab, my reason for striving for community work is to see community harmony, peace and love in the community, unity in the community, um, community cohesion in the community, mm -hmm. and through that, I feel I'm happy, I feel other people happy, and when other people, we, everyone happy in the community, I feel community is a nice, happy place to live. Okay. Now, Fred, I'm going to ask you a similar question now. You know, you've been involved in the community for a long time. Uh, you've worked with many, many young people. Mm -hmm. You've seen them, you know, go through, you know, from beginning stage to becoming coaches themselves. Yeah. Now, why is it, uh, before, before that, let me take your call, Fred, yeah? I'll come to you in a second. Hello, assalamu alaikum. And I go to the twice a week, and I and I enjoy it very much. And I am so and I make a me friends there. I think there's a two, that's a judo student saying that you know they have two. What's your name? I didn't catch your name. Labiba. 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 How old are you? How old are you? Seven. Seven, and you go to the judo. Yes. Wow. And do you do you enjoy it? Yes. Wow. Do you want to say hello to Fred? Hello. Hello, Fred. Hello, mate. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for your call. Um, a seven-year-old who goes to the judo club. Yeah, and she said she meets other people, other culture, and it's, it's kind of given her a bit of understanding, that's what she's saying, yeah. Well, she, cause I, I couldn't understand. Yeah, she was saying that she meets other people, there's, you know, English, European, uh, oh, some, wow. something like that, she said, that, yeah, and it kind of gives her, like, understanding of different yeah, cultures. for a seven-year-old to say that, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> Fred? Yeah. We know, this is, this is so encouraging, isn't it? Yeah. Now, <laughs> coming back to my question, Fred, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, time and time again we see incidents happening in our community uh, and sometimes it's fatal yeah kids stabbing each other shooting each other i mean what 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 picks them do that fred what, why do you think this kind of you know short ill activities happen in our communities i think that like i said before you've got the asian community you've got the uh Afro-Caribbean, you've also got the African races, and they don't intermingle. So they become very intolerant of anyone coming into their circle. Mm -hmm. What I want to do is break that circle down. I want my next black belt to be one of the Bengali children. Let him teaching his community. Then I've got Somalian. Mm. I want him to be a black belt teaching his community and teach that, you know, you've got to learn to get, live together. Mm. You've got good and bad in all races, creeds. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And let's bring out the best rather than the worst. The worst. Okay. Mix 
tolerate each other, learn from each other, because every one of them has got something to learn. Absolutely. I Absolutely. Taking it a step further, yes, I'm a martial arts man. I look at judo, I look at karate, I look at the mixed martial arts, kickboxing, and I see that there's something I can use in my own sport, right? So why can't I look at different communities and think, cool, I like that idea. Let's use that in the way we're training these kids, where the way we're educating these children. Thanks very much, Fred. Um, All right. I'm going to come to Tasmi in a second. Let me take a call. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Hello, caller. Assalamu alaikum. We lost the call. Please uh, call back. Afnay Abad, do you have any call for Tasmi? Next call. Okay. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. My name is Shahid, and I just want to speak regarding the popular youth. Yes, please, Shahid. Go ahead. Shahid, can you turn your volume down? Your TV volume? I'm, I'm away from the TV. Okay, because I can hear the echo. All right, carry on, Shahid. We can hear you. Yeah, I um, just want to say um, how good the popular development group is doing. Yeah. Um, I think it's a great job they're doing. Um, you know, great inspiration for the kids, for their extra homework classes, the judo classes, especially for my son, who's I'm going to put through to the, for the football sessions there, which is going to start running. Okay. And I think... You know, every, every other kid or and parents should do the same, you know. It occupies them instead of them from going to the wrong direction in life. Yeah. Because only f us parents, we can do and we can direct our own kids. Absolutely. And, yeah, and as, as a community, we should all, you know, try and help this um, organization grow. And Chad, is there anyone you want to speak to in the, on the panel? No, 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 I'm fine, thank you. Okay, thanks for your call, Shahid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, very, another very encouraging call. Now, that's me, I'm going to ask you a very serious question now. Um, as a young person, growing up in Poplar, you know, um, how, do, how do you feel when you hear about incidents that take place in your area where people are being stabbed or, you know, even people dying from stabbing incidents? How does it make you feel as a young person? And as a young person, it gets me really shocked mm -hmm. because I, I can't believe that some people are capable in doing such things. And it gets me like upset and worried at the same time. Imagine things like that happen to me, my family, mm -hmm. and my cousins. Like. And how, how do you think as a young person that we as a community can you know, prevent these things happening in the future? What well, can be done? I think as a community, we already are taking the steps in uh, getting the association ready. But I think we all need to be given that talk and we all need to be understanding that some of the things that we may be seeing that may be happening is not right, is wrong. And some because we're growing up with these things happening is why we're thinking is normal and why so many incidents like so is taking place. Wow, OK. Thank you very much. Real. I think I've, I've touched on a very serious subject here, you know, um, and this is uh, what it, you know, it really does have an impact on the whole community, but I'm sure it does even more in your area because you know, this is where the incidents have taken place. And uh, again, as a local community person, a local, you know, parent, a community activist, yeah, what, what are the reasons you think, you know, this, like Fred said, it could be, you know, uh, the segregation community segregation, you know, we have Bangladeshis in living in one area, in the white community one area, Afro-Caribbeans in another area. That, that's one of the, could be one of the reasons, but some of the incidents happening, Bengalis versus Bengalis. Say in Poplar, yeah, it was Bengali versus Bengali, and yeah. the white um, boy that died was another white, uh, his yeah. relative, yeah, he was a white person. Yeah, like exactly. like, yeah. So sometimes what it is, is um, again, social time. It's, it's in your social time, you know, sometimes there's people binge drinking, there's people, you know, doing drugs. There's so many people doing so many things, getting intoxicated, and they kind of, you know, they're out of it, and you know, they 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 they, they, they go and express themselves in the wrong way, mm. or they have something that they see on the road that instead of dealing it with in a proper manner, they deal it with a different kind of manner yeah. that is gonna ca cause more tension and friction, and this is why it happens. It's being what I think is it's about empowering youths, 
being able to communicate with others. Say what we've done is um, getting a lot of young volunteers to come and help us out. Mm. There's a lot of people that didn't come here today because they were shy of camera. And these are unsung heroes, they're football coaches, the ones who are going to do the homework clubs. You know, these are the people who are actually, they are the unsung heroes. They don't want to be, you know, they're camera shy. And it's about giving these people responsibilities in the community. So where they go and talk to other people, then they communicate with other people from a different kind of angle yeah, instead of yeah. saying, oh, what are you doing here, mate? Yeah, you know, course, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we're looking at it like that. This is my territory. Yeah, this is my yeah. territory. Yeah. Instead, we're getting these youngsters to go to different territories, but work in a different way. So now we're taking the Wilcrooks to Robin Hood, and vice versa, we'd, what we're trying to do is get different areas come in different places and you know work with each other. And when they work with each other, they think, hang on, this guy, I like this guy, it's not too bad. You know, before, he didn't know that guy, and they had frictions. But you, do you know what, what really makes me concerned or worried is that you just said, Will Crooks and Robin Hood, they're not million miles away, are they? But they're not. Right, but still, there's this territorial... There's a, yeah. What, yeah. I mean... There's a t but what happens is, um, because obviously in the 90s, the, um, and up to 2000, we used to have a lot of um, you know, racial attacks and yeah, weapons yeah. because they were in groups. At that time, they were, you know, they grouped up the Chris Street boys and this boy, the group group, and they used to fight each other. Then what happened is, so slowly people started moving on, but they're still stuck in the groups. Yeah. And that's where, again, I think... Has it filtered through, though? Like, like you know, the, 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 the previous generation, people of your age, for example, yeah? You've moved on, you're married, settled down. But <laughs> that grouping, that territorial, you know, postcode... So sometimes what happens is just, you know, um, kids from the blocks come and they all go to the same school, yeah. they all go to the same primary school, secondary school, college, and they start hanging around each other. Right, okay. And then start putting a name for each other, we're, you know, I think we're from this area or this. And then, you know, obviously the police force and they see, oh, this is a gang. Sometimes if you see it as people, as individual, as community group, then again, it will come as different as well. That these are not actually a gang going around doing this. They're not. Sometimes they're it's our own. Gangs, they? We make yeah. label, we label people and stig stigmatize them. Okay. And that's why it kind of... Thank you very much, Ruel. Uh, viewers, we have to take another short break. Uh, please join us after the break where we'll be talking more about uh, local community initiatives, uh, programs uh, de delivered by the Popular Youth and Communities Association. So I'll see you after the break. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to uh, the last segment of Community Champions uh, with me, Zakir Khan. Um, tonight we're talking to uh, a very well-known, well-deserved organization in Tower Hamlets. Um, uh, let's watch a clip of who they are, what they do, and then we'll come back. Poplar Youth Community Development Association পূর্ব লন্ডনের পপলারের একটি নবীন স্বেচ্ছাসেবী সংগঠন 2013 সালে প্রতিষ্ঠিত এই প্রতিষ্ঠানটির মূল লক্ষ্য ধর্ম বর্ণ জাতি নির্বিশেষে কমিউনিটির সকল তরুণদের গঠনমূলক কাজে উৎসাহিত করার মাধ্যমে শক্তিশালী প্রজন্ম তৈরিতে অবদান রাখা সংগঠনের কার্যক্রমগুলোর মাঝে রয়েছে টাওয়ার হ্যামলেটস এডুকেশন ফাউন্ডেশন অ্যাপ্রেন্টিস প্রোগ্রাম আন্ডার 14 ফুটবল কোচিং পপলার ড্রাগনস জুডো হেলথ অ্যাওয়ারনেস ইন রমাদান ফুটবল টুর্নামেন্ট ফেস্টিভালস এন্ড ফান ডে ড্রাগস এন্ড অ্যালকোহল অ্যাওয়ারনেস প্রোগ্রাম এমপ্লয়মেন্ট থ্রু ডেভেলপমেন্ট ট্রেনিং হেলথ অ্যাওয়ারনেস ইভেন্ট সেমিনার অন প্যারেন্টিং কমিউনিটি চ্যারিটি বার্বিকিউ কমিউনিটি ইফতার গ্যাদারিং ইউথ সেমিনার অন স্কিল ডেভেলপমেন্ট ও স্কিল ডেভেলপমেন্ট ওয়ার্কশপস দর্শক আমাদের আজকের কমিউনিটি চ্যাম্পিয়ন পপলার ইউথ কমিউনিটি ডেভেলপমেন্ট অ্যাসোসিয়েশন আসুন জানি তাদের সম্পর্কে আরও বিস্তারিত
uh, the Poplar Youth and Community Association, Development Association, based in Tower Hamlets, Poplar. Um, before the break, I was speaking to Ruhel, Dulal, and Fred, and now I've been joined by a new guest um, who is uh, another volunteer, a young volunteer of the organization, and that is Samira Hanum. Assalamu alaikum. Samira, how are you? I'm good, thank you. You okay? Yeah. How old are you? I'm 12. 12? Yeah. Which school do you go to? I go to London Park. London Park. So that means which year are you in if you're 12? I'm in year 8. Year 8? Yes. Yeah. Okay. How is school good? Yeah, it's fine. London Park is a very nice school now, isn't it? Yeah. Very state of the art. Yeah. Um, okay, Samira, you are a volunteer with the organization. Yeah. Yeah? Um, yeah, I am. Now tell me, what do you do as a volunteer? What is it you do? I um, help out at my local judo club, Poplar Dragons Judo. Yeah. And uh, I help out at events. Like so far, we've had a fun day, a barbecue, um, a Syria and Gaza aware uh -huh. awareness, and um, yeah, uh, we've had a. So you know, for the Poplar Dragon Judo, yeah. what kind of help do you do? What, what do you do for them? I um, help the parents like register okay. and I show the kids around right, okay. and help them if they need anything. So you fill in the form, yeah. Yeah. you know, the contact details? Yeah. 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 Okay. Hold on. I'll come back to you in a second. Let me take a call. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. Who's this? It's Mahmoud speaking from Poplar. Yes, Mahmoud. How are you? I'm fine. Hello. I just, I just want to make a, say something. So yeah. Am I in the studio? Yes, yes. You're live on the studio. I just want to say, well done to Ruel and Drua for doing what they, whatever they're doing in Poplar. Yeah. Um, I just want to say two things. First of all, um, being a community organization means you have to represent different sets of the community. Yeah. How they're doing this. And secondly, how they're representing the female community within our locality. The female community are degraded sometimes. They don't get involved. How they encouraging the female community to come involved, and how they working with different factions within the community to unite the community. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Good question. Let me come to you, Dilal. How are you engaging the female community, and how are you engaging the different sections of the community in your programs? First of all, thank you, um, Brother w um, Mahmoud, for your question. Um, now, since from the first program, by sir, from the first program we've been doing. That's nearly one and a half years, or over one and a half years. Every single program we did, we had young volunteers, women sister volunteers. Yep. The Iftar gathering we did, we had many, many Somali and Bengali white sisters on our program. Um, the youth seminar we did, you were there by sub, you saw many, many families with mom, children, and um, dads, mm -hmm. um, the funder we did, middle of a state, we had many, many hundreds of sisters and mothers and fathers and children. So um, we, are, we are targeting our sisters. We are encouraging them to come forward. We are asking for their help and support. And hopefully, hopefully in future, we will do more to encourage them to come and participate in our program. Okay. I, th I think Thanks th a lot. I think that maybe <laughs> we should you know, put the question back to Mahmoud now, is how are you helping the community and organizations like Poplar? Are you volunteering? Are you giving your time? So real, I want you to add on what Dulal said. Um, yeah, again, we, someone like Mahmoud, by knowing him, he's a teacher as well. Yeah. You know, these people, if they did volunteer actually and help us out, you, you know, it, it'd be really nice, you know, to see the whole community <laughs> getting together and, you know, having passion for the same thing that, you know, we want to help our kids, we want to, you know, try to grow that. Again, what um, going on to do now, um, and the question is how we integrate, how yeah. we mix. Yeah. This is what we're trying to do. Sometimes what happens is there's youth co um, events and things are happening that don't represent the people living there. And what happens is it's, it's, it's representing irrelevant things and people go there and they don't understand or they get put off. So sometimes we have to tune in. This is where living in the area, living in yeah, Poplar myself, yeah. growing up, you tune in, you see what is the needs, you understand the needs. And then you start going about doing that collectively. And this is how it brings everyone in, you know. And, yeah. he, and then you invite others, like we invite the church people, we invite um, Sister Christine, with the, there's, you know, all the sect, we go and, you know, go and get different people in to get involved. And to, like the community Iftar gathering we did, we wanted Splash to work alongside us as well, so we got them as well. 
and working with other organisations. That's how you get other people involved. Of course. And Fred, you yourself said that if uh, this organisation wasn't actively promoting community cohesion, you wouldn't be part of this, would you? No. You know, it's important to you, isn't it, that? You yeah, know? because, like I said, you're just going to be a separate entity. And as for girls, I teach girls judo. I teach girls to be instructors. And they've done very well with the kids. And like I said, nothing would please me more than this young lady starting judo in a couple of years' time. There she is, teaching alongside me, or if not, teaching her own club. I'd, I'd get a buzz out of that. Samira, is there something you'd like to do in the future? Uh, yeah. Do you know? Wh what kind of sports do you like? Um, Any sports? Yeah, uh, I do. Like. What do you enjoy playing? Um, Anything? I'm not a big fan of sports. You're not? Okay, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. That's, that's nothing wrong with that. What, what do you enjoy doing in your spare time? When you have free time, what do you do? Um, I go out, I... I yeah. Read? Yeah, I read. Do you enjoy reading? Yeah. Do you enjoy socialising yeah. with your fa friends and family? Yeah. She likes a bit of music. Do you? <laughs> you like music? Yeah. Okay, that's great. Okay, let's come back to Dulal now. Uh, let's talk about future. Uh, yeah? Baisa, I just wanted to touch on Mahmoud Baisa's <coughs> question. Um, yeah. Um, tonight, this program, we, we, we were, uh, there was a person called um, Patsy Reina. She's, um, she's a um, drugs and alcohol worker. Um, and we, about six months ago, we did a program in the community, um, Drugs and Alcohol Awareness, and she was one of our speakers. Mm -hmm. She was speaking, and it, she was basically telling the crowd and the audience um, about her own life experience. So, again, we are utilizing our sisters. Today, tonight, she was going to be part of this program, but uh, sadly, she had to go somewhere. Apology. Um, um, on on this couple of s cup, cup, this Sunday gone w on our judo session, we had about ten different uh, families with prams and childrens sisters again. <laughs> Last session, I think we've answered that question already. So <laughs> we are answer. doing as much as we can. No, no, but we'll uh, do more. That question has been answered. Okay. Uh, we, we've touched on that already. Now let's talk about. Um, young people, let's talk about their future, let's talk about opportunities. Now, again, Poplar being where it is, in, in the heart of Thai Hamlets, a stone, stone throws away from Canary Wharf. Yeah, one of, uh, Canary Wharf is now regarded as the second financial district of Europe. It's quite a big you know, uh, position to take. Now, how do you see young people from Poplar moving on through education, employment, training, and getting good, reliable, permanent jobs at Canary Wharf, real. So obviously one of the main things is you know, networking, like with yourself, you know, you're part of Canary Wharf, what you've done for us, mm -hmm. like, you know, taking many of these youths on to go and see experience Canary Wharf, experience how it's going to feel like working in Canary Wharf. And that was an eye-opener for them, as one of the earlier one, uh, guests said, that it was something that they d wasn't aware of the things that was happening. Again, we're working with Swan Housing, we're working with different organisations, with Swan Housing, they, um, with painting and decorating, they have um, apprenticeship. So taking youths from the street, you know, talking to them, individually talking to them, seeing what they're doing, and going and t you know, telling them them, look, joining them up into onto these courses, mm -hmm. and again, say with the Time Education Foundation that we're starting, is a homework cl a club and study support, say in Robin Hood, but it's something that we want all throughout whole of Tower Hamlets, where our kids are benefiting, you know, and the local people are empowered. Again, it's about local people, it's like say like Samira, she's volunteering, and other people who are volunteering, they gain experience. So when they go to out to get a job, and um, some have, they could say this is the experience that I have gained. But a lot of barriers that people find is not having enough experience. Yeah. So having these organisation, these um, kind of different different kind of things happening everyone has an opportunity and it's for the local people first to go come and help the local teachers the local TAs the local um, youth the local you know everyone them to come and empower this you know giving them empowering and for them to gain experience so then when they go out into the real world when they go to you know Canary Wolf you know we have links and we have you know this is the mm. main way we can bridge that gap okay what about um, people who have uh, you know who've grown up in Poplar um, went on to further education, higher education,
graduated and then came back and you know found good you know secure jobs employment now what would you say to those individuals you know you know shouldn't they come back to the community and give something back huh. to the younger generation thanks for your question Basab. um on our management board on our community management board we have a person young person he's the secretary muhibul islam <coughs> he done his degree and is very educated again he's young and he's contributing and i've told him we've told him many times and we have a, another young person um, um, assistant uh, treasurer uh, um, farhad um, again he's doing his degree and i've told him we've told him many times collectively um, a lot of educational success but we want we want to see some of that back into the community towards others so that way community look good organization look good you look good i look good every one of us look good mm. so for that good reason by sub collectively last wednesday we sat and we decided educational homework club after school key stage one and two um so and many times i've said to many young people around the table in a discussion i said look you have uh, the world financial center in front of you just in front of you across the road uh, dockland um if only if you decide to get yourself actively involved with um, uh, homework or the organization or community work or um, you know job set um, you could easily end up somewhere mm. so our job is to empower them encourage them and help them and support them and guide them and i feel myself as an organization as a human being i've been doing that we've been doing that but my honest message to people of popular look this is your organization although we're saying we collectively created this but this is popular organization popular people needs to benefit from that popular people needs to come out and help and support our organization through that this organization will become big when this organization become big it will make a huge difference and it will give huge um, ammunition back to the community and through that we live better life through that community live better life so i hope people come and support and help us in no, our we need volunteers <laughs> as well yeah. and if you can help us out so you are always passionate, isn't he? When you talk about community, when you talk about young people, the passion comes out from him. Now, Samira, what do you want to do when you grow up? What, what would you like to do? What would you like to become? I actually want to, I would love to become a teacher, but I haven't really decided. You haven't decided yet? No. Okay, teaching is not a bad profession. Good, good. Uh, Fred, uh, what's, the, what's the future oh, for you? Well, when I grow up, <laughs> I want to be a speaker like them. <laughs> the, no, the, f the future is, like I said, I've produced people that have gone on to teach. Yeah. I've produced people that, because of what they did with me, helped them get apprenticeships. I mean, it helped me when I got an apprenticeship, when I was a youngster. The bloke went, oh, you're dedicated then. Mm, of course, yeah. And he took me, he took a chance on me. But uh, if you go in there and you go, yeah, I hang around the streets with me mates, uh, we kick a few doors in, who <laughs> the hell wants to touch you? True, right? absolutely. If you show that you're doing something, you know, you're doing a sport, it doesn't have to be my sport, or you're doing... Uh, like the girls are doing, they're doing the administration for us, uh, showing people around, explaining what's going on to the parents because like I'm on the mat teaching. Yeah. You know, it shows that they've got a little bit of get up and go in them. Absolutely. And they've got half a chance of a start in life. And as for Canary Wolf, right, you don't have to go into the financial side. There's restaurants over there. You can be a restaurant man. Yep. Retail outlets, there's maintenance. Of course. There's, there's a big wealth of transport to the community. You've got a railway link. You know, you have got other options. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well done, Fred. That's great. Uh, uh, thank you to Fred for making this um, judo possible. Without his help, this wouldn't have been you possible. You said it. <laughs> um, well, as well, thank you. And there's other volunteers, by example, who hasn't here. Okay. I want to say thank you to all of you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Dilal. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us tonight. Uh, dear viewers, uh, our time has run up, uh, run out. Uh, we will join you after two two weeks. Uh, in two weeks' time, with a new organisation, 
And we'll talk about new projects quickly, Rahul. What do you want to say? Can we say the, the, day, um, the Family Education Foundation is opening on the 30th of October in Robin Hood Gardens, 5 o'clock. Um, judo every Sundays at um, 2.15 in the workhouse, popular workhouse, and the, um, the popular tra um, football training every Wednesdays from 4.15 to 5.15 at popular workhouse as well. These are the current three. We'd like people to join in as much as possible. You've said it now. You've known it. No so please join them, support them. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.